Our first child was born in 1997, and the following summer, my parents moved from Pennsylvania to South Carolina, where they were about two hours from us, living on Lake Murray, with the house right there on the lake with a dock and a boat. And somewhere after my brother started having kids a couple years later, we started getting together every summer for about a week at a time on the lake and having fun adventures together. I believe it was in 2008 because I was pregnant with our third child. My brother had made some fun films. Well, no, it would have been with his kids before that. Probably. But it was anyway. sometime they were young kids. <laughs> Um, we decided to, um, he had taken a book and inserted the face of the kids in the pictures where the book was to, and telling the story. And so we had this book, The Gingerbread Man. And so he recorded each of us saying the different lines and videotaping our faces and then inserted it into the pages of the book. Um, it was quite clever. So we had done this and it was very entertaining and it sort of sparked this love of creating movies in everyone. And so, I don't know, a number of years later, um, I'm umming a lot, aren't I, Don? Yes. The kids, so my kids and my niece and nephew wanted to make a movie together and they made a movie, I believe it was called Dr. Chopsticks. <laughs> And they kind of did it on the fly. I, they created it and filmed it together. And so I believe it was for the next summer, they wanted to do a sequel. And I remember our two older kids, especially our middle daughter, she wrote out like the script for it. And it was long and lengthy. And she came up with this whole script. And then we got together and I can picture them there on the stairs and Harrison's a perfectionist and he's making him go over and do it over <laughs> and over again. And Quiet on the set. They were getting annoyed and eyes rolling and it was intense because he was probably a young teen, 12 or 13. Yeah. And so these, they were, you know. Um, probably seven to 10, somewhere yeah, like that, in that range. In that range. Or the other ones. Um. So it was an experience. They didn't get the second one finished. And yet the memories of them Run, the running this, around filming. Together. And from that, I, with the help of my son, I helped him to build a film club with his friends. I said, you know, your siblings and niece and nephew are much younger than you don't have the patience my niece and nephew, his cousins, don't have the patience that you do to produce something. What if you did this with a group of friends? Shortly after that, he did just that with a group of other homeschool friends, the group he was part of, and then we developed it into a whole film club. We had a co-op where we met weekly for different classes and activities, and we created this film club. And over the course of three years, they produced three different short films. Was it three? I thought it was even more than that, but... Uh... And it was so much fun and just and hey. the funny thing is is now my niece and nephew my nephew just graduated from film school with um a, in script writing and his sister is at the same film school out in california and just seeing where things have gone our son had taken his ability with the camera and did some video work for some different businesses and things kind of some freelance work so summertime fun, summertime memories. Hello, this is Don. And this is Gina. With Focused Healthy Family. And this is podcast number 64. And today, of course, we're talking about summer fun. So before we get to that, though, we want to take a moment for our sponsor. Our sponsor is Q Sciences. I've been... A representative for Q Sciences for over a year. I found this company through a friend and did some research and reading about these products. And I really like what I found when I learned about them, the research and time that they've put into the quality of these products to be better absorbed into the body. Things like the vitamin D spray. Our youngest was on 
a capsule vitamin D and yet vitamin D levels remained the same with follow-up checkups. And with the spray, it increased. It increased pretty, pretty strong. Almost double. Yeah. And I mean, we're talking her levels were maybe 20. And I think I want to say they went up to 47 or something around that range. And this, the sleep spray is another great one. It's got melatonin, 5-HTP, and I believe another herbal supplement in there. And because it's a spray, you spray it on your tongue, it gets absorbed more quickly into your body to be more effective to help you in the moment. We're using the B12 spray. We've used the vitamin C spray. They have a Q Max product, which is a multivitamin. And they also have the CBD, different, uh, a, a variety of different. Uh, it's full spectrum, full spectrum oils. Yeah. They even have a THC free version. It comes in different flavors. There is a mushroom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, armor. It's called Q Armor. It's a powder, and I get the chai flavor. Put it in my chai tea for a double chai drink. So in, instead of, uh, as they say, w flushing your supplements down well, the toilet or the drain, you want to get something like this that, that's fully absorbed. You, you, it's like flushing money down the toilet too, if you're not using a supplement that absorbs well and does well for your body. So that's what Q Science is really about. It's a good, uh, well-absorbed, high-nutrient product. They have multiple products. They have child-specific products. They now also have some facial cream products. Um, I've been using a night cream <laughs> to um, minimize the effects of sunlight and stress and aging on my skin and they have oh they have a hemp um, lotion that's also a wonderful product that we've tried so check us out learn more you can find the link at our website www.focusedhealthyfamily.com you can also go to focusedhealthyfamily.com forward slash q sciences the letter q and sciences with an s at the end with the s at the end yes And we're back. And we've got uh, some information, some good ideas on different things you can do during the summer with your family. Uh, so, yeah, I found some different articles. And the one I really liked came from doinggoodtogether.org. And the name of the article is Empowered by Mess Six Tools for Creative Summer Fun. So, I just want to read this from this article. In our effort to raise children to be helpers and change makers, we must give them the room to experiment with their curiosity. How else would they gain the courage to rely on their own ideas? I know life as a parent is chaotic. It takes a Herculean effort simply to keep children dressed, fed, and housed in a building containing less than 50% dirty laundry and stray Lego pieces. <laughs> Though the messy bits of life can be stressful, it's time to embrace the power of messy fun. Without the limitations of you might get dirty and I don't want to have to clean that up later. Oh, kids can get remarkably creative with an hour or two of unscheduled time on their hands. Thanks to a few well-planned, admittedly messy tools, active curiosity can become a state of mind in your house. So these are six messy tools to empower your kids. So they, 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 they go through these six different ideas and we'll just share some of that here. Well, I think before we do, I just, uh, uh, that word messy, I think is is important in this. I don't like it and it gives me chills to think about it, but yet at the same time, the messy factor is a good learning place. You know, we, we want to open up their their minds and allow them to, to explore. And so creating that space for mess. Mm -hmm. We created an invention station in the basement for our youngest who really wanted to, at a very young age, build things and put things together. You can set up a paint station and allow mess to happen in that space. And, or I used to take the kids outside to do finger painting. So the mess would remain outside. You do this in the summertime. Then you can splash off in a kiddie pool or a sprinkler and, 
or well, just with the hose i used to do the drawings on the driveway you know with chalk so, so. chalk yes <laughs> and that was fun you know repetitive but fun <laughs> the same signs every day but drawing yeah drawing was some there's some simple ideas and oh, things yeah. that we can do so these are just some different ways to encourage that creativity they talk about an upcycle bin and it says before you recycle and reuse you can store clean bottles and paper goods and they can look at using this to create things like yeah. i talked about with having the in fact when we created the invention station for our youngest we asked for family members for office supplies miscellaneous things odds and ends. scraps and even kind of like not junk, but you know, just uh, yeah. stuff they had pieces of they or things of, and, and we got a sense. lot of stuff because we created it for her birthday and surprised her and had all the supplies there already. Yeah. And so yeah. they gifted us some different supplies, and it gave this great opportunity. We had this dresser drawer that we used for storing the things and organizing it. When I uh, I put together some tools, uh, we had, we actually had a a small a child size hammer and pliers. And I think we even had goggle, you know, like the hard safety goggles or safety goggles and glue and, and different things, which is what they recommend in this is putting some string in there, or twine and glue and things that they can use to put them together and make their artwork out of. So that goes along those lines. So these different ideas evolve around these type of ideas. They, they suggest having a nature center. So having a corner space in your house where you fill up with sticks and rocks and pine cones. From outside. Um, and, you know, having, if you have a microscope or a... Um... <laughs> they, they, well, they can see it now, but uh, not... <laughs> She's uh, punching air or something. I'm looking on the name to look at things up close. A microscope, you mean? No, the, the circle glass that you hold with your hand. A magnifying glass. A magnifying glass. <laughs> that wasn't That's what a punch in. The, a fist looks like a magnifying glass, by the way. <laughs> Remember that we play charades. This is a magnifying glass. <laughs> okay, that'll be a new rule. <laughs> we haven't played charades in a long time. That's a good summertime thing, too. There's so many things you can pull out of your own childhood, things from simpler times, things you've forgotten about before we go into more of those ideas. So having this nature center, having a place to pull out supplies and things. And this one I really like is having a magic mail center. So having a place to put mail and to be able to have a note for someone who needs a uplifting smile or a word of encouragement. Well, yeah, and, and you could think about where you could even send it to, if you think about it, you know, if you could send it to a, a nursing center. Oh, or... this, this was in the house. Oh, so it doesn't so someone, go out. Someone within your house needs mail. Oh, uh, well, remember it, that, the mailbox. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. It, of, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, again, I yeah, go out tell, tell, and come back. Tell the story about the mailbox. I'm going. Oh. <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm playing here. Uh, well, we had this little red, it looked just like a little mailbox, but it was, I don't know, about the size of a... You're motioning, but it is about this big. It's about this big. No, it's this big. And, <laughs> well, we've, I think first, I don't know where we got it from. I don't remember that. But I remember we first started using it when you were going off to work. And you would leave mail in there for our, our oldest child when he... He was probably still sleeping. He was probably four, five, three, four, five. So I think we did for quite a while. And so, and that was the biggest excitement. He could not wait to, you know, to get to that, get to that mail and see what was going on that day. And you even fashioned a flag on it mm -hmm. so we could put the flag up. Yeah. And so yeah, I was never here to see that. I, he, yeah, well, he he would put mail back to you too. That's right. He would leave me. So you could again. you would get it, like I don't know if you open it when he got when you got home or waited till the next day or what. I, I don't remember that part, but yeah, he was excited. That that was exciting. Well, and it and if you think about mail too, you remember the Harry Potter mail. 
where we used to put for the owl to pick up. Yeah, my friend told me about that, where you you leave a a letter. We we would on the porch. He'd write a letter, and, and then you'd you just bound it like a, like I don't know, almost look like a diploma or something, bound it with ribbon or whatever. And of course, the owl would come and pick it up and take it, and then it would drop. I don't know if it dropped the same day. I think it it was like a day or so later. Yeah. You would get a, a yeah, and uh, that was always that was fun. I was thinking more along the mail lines that uh, Blues Clues was kind of a new show when our oldest was young, oh. and we used to kind of play that game Here's together the... too. Well, how's that song go? You, you, go ahead, sing it. Yeah. Here's the mail, it never fails. It makes you want to wag your tail. And when it comes, you want to wail mail. mail. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, we would leave clues around the house. I think we still have a chalk we'll clues. I think we still have a chalk print on the side of our house. Oh, yeah, I think it is. It, it never washed off. So be careful about chalking on your brick. <laughs> Sounds weird. I don't know. Having a... watch out for chalking on the brick coming to you this summer at theaters near you. So many fun memories of things <laughs> that you can do with your kids. So check out that article from whatever I just said earlier. Look at it on your notes. <laughs> I can get that for you. Hold on a minute here. Um, oh, it's on the cover letter. Doing good together. Doing good together. Doing good together. Dot org. Um, well, you know, somebody talking about things from our childhood that a cardboard box mm. was like heaven to get a big, like a refrigerator one or a dishwasher one or something like that, because it it just left the mind open to what you could make out of it, and we'd make forts out of it. We actually did one one time. Uh, the school, the grade school I went to used to have a parade. We'd have a, a picnic every year at the end of the uh, school year. And we'd have a parade that went throughout the village that we lived in. And one year we were doing um, a tribute to uh, the Hollywood, if I remember right. And so uh, my my best friend at the time, Vic, uh, we we were... He, uh, I was Al Jolson. I was supposed to be Al Jolson, which uh, that goes back. That's who that is? <laughs> well, he was a singer, dancer, comedian, all all kind of repped. I think he started out in vaudeville and, and end up in movies and and TV. Uh, and he, I can't. I try to remember how the voice went because if you knew Susie like I know Susie, oh oh. Oh, what a gal! You know, he had this really strange voice that I had. I had, to, and I had to do that. I had to do a song uh, in front of the the judges stand. I think it was or whatever. And Vic was Eddie Cantor, who was another same kind of um, comedian, dancer, singer, variety, vaudeville kind of person. And so we built out of a big box. We built a cinema. We we cut a, made a roof out of it, and we put. A, uh, like uh, the old fashioned um, uh, BU, what do you call it? B BU theater? B B how do you say that? The Bayou theater? Like uh, there's a term for it. Anyway, so and we put it on a wagon, so we would pull it along, and then we'd do our little, we'd do our little song. We'd stop at different places along the way, and everybody'd have to do different songs. Wow, how old were you when you did all this? Well, that would probably. Uh, I'm guessing I was, it might have been seventh or eighth grade. I can't remember so which one. In the late 60s, early 70s. Yeah. Or... <laughs> yeah. It was fun. I mean, we, yeah, I had to get, got my little hamness out. I was a ham and enjoyed it. You're still a ham. No, not me. <laughs> so, one thing onward, <laughs> looking at local resources. One of the articles I was reading talked about a staycation. You remember the Oh, we, yeah, we did that. We did that. So instead of going on vacation somewhere, and I want to say Abby was maybe two or three. And so our older son, he's four years older than her. And we took a week off and I made meals ahead of time and we planned to use paper plates so we wouldn't have a lot of cleanup. And we made, I remember we made a macaroni 
kind of um, screen. There we go. <laughs> this is a okay. So for future charades, this is a screen. Screen. <laughs> like to hang between the doorways these four people that are just listening to this are like what are they doing so strung macaroni on string and hung it in the doorway oh, that's right yeah to make whatever you would call that i'm really struggling with my words today we i don't to have the speech therapist on again it, well it was uh, i mean it was something like uh, retro to something like the, maybe the 70s when you you know the, it was cool to hang doorways and you'd have to go through with beads or something like that so and we made signs up for the different, we kind of renamed the rooms of the house, like the kitchen, I don't know if it was the cafe, or we created all different types of things. And then we did a lot of local. We went, uh, Morrow Mountain is not far from Charlotte, and there is a public pool out there. Oh, and yeah. there's also drive-in movie theater. Yeah. And we, we took a day and we went out there and went on an adventure there. Was that when we went to the, like that, rose garden or the garden i thought that to have some memory of going to like a I'm not anyway sure. i'm not sure so looking looking at locally what you have now here in charlotte there is charlotte on the cheap and my friend jody runs charlotte on the cheap.com and there are other living on the cheap resources in other cities in your area and you can look in the show notes for links to other resources, but she puts out a whole summer fun list of things to do. And some of the things you can look for in your area are free bowling. The bowling alleys in this area, they do this free bowling for kids for the summer. There's summer movie programs with reduced low cost movies that they show, places that you can go swimming. In Charlotte, we have this awesome place called Imagine On. And it is a combination with our children's theater and the, the library system here. And it's a one of a kind of building and they bring in traveling exhibits that come through it. So there's no cost to go there and see those exhibits. Looking at outdoor concerts, a lot of different places will have outside music that you can go to. Finding a place to go boating, whether it's just a rowboat or paddle boat or a canoe. Remember we did that down at your parents, I believe. We went out and we found those paddle boats that we sat in them and pedaled. Yeah, I think one washed up on the oh, was that it? at my parents' <laughs> house. <laughs> and yeah. It was from Gilligan's Island. Go out and do the paddle boating. It's fun to do simple things like that. I, I uh, one day went with my kids and my daughter's friends and we went out to um, Morrow Mountain. I believe it's Baden Lake, and we're able to rent. Oh yeah, pet you canoes, canoes. And, yeah. and rowboats, and we went out on the water. Had a great time. Another What's canoe with you? <laughs> 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 Did you talk about drive-in theaters? I don't know if you. I mentioned that when we went out to Abamar, but finding a a, a drive-in movie can be so much fun, and they're they are still exist in some areas. But no, but I just read something, and there's I think less than two hundred in the whole country. Wow! Wow! It's it's yeah, we have two of them in our area. Um, I mean, that might be a little old. That maybe they're coming. I I think they're really kind of coming back in a way. Like parks and other places will show a movie up on a wall or bring in a screen and do outdoor movies in other ways besides a drive-in. But if you've got a drive-in that you can go to, or if you're taking a vacation somewhere, see if there is a drive-in in the area. A fun fact, I, and I don't remember the name of the person that started, but the reason he started drive-in theaters because his mother did not like the seats in the cinema. They were uncomfortable to her. So he thought of a way that she could sit in a car, which is more comfortable for her, and watch a movie, and thus the start of the drive-in movies. We went several times with our kids. In fact, when our youngest was, she was a baby. It, it was summertime, so she was maybe six months, if that. And it was in the middle of the Harry Potter mo movie fest. I believe it was the seventh movie. And we went with friends. And because we were outside, I was able to nurse her to sleep and kind of keep her away from the noise because you listen through speakers or through your car radio. radio. Yeah. And so I was able to minimize the noise for her to be able to sleep and to be out late because it doesn't start until dark. And there's a lot of fun memories. 
Well, just a little quick memory from the past about drive-in movies. Um, when I was, I was, I was before probably grade school with my friend Janie. She she moved from my neighborhood, and so I used to go and I'd go visit her and stay with. Her. It wasn't very far from our house; it was still in in the area. But from her house, she sat up high enough. There was a cinema, a, a, a drive-in movie cinema. A, down the hill from you know, from a little ways away that we could see the the movie we could watch the movie we couldn't hear it we yeah. we used to pretend to like make up you know what they were saying and stuff but it was fun to it was fun it was fun thing to do as a kid to sit there and try to rem- think what they were talking about or what the movie was about so my childhood memory is going to see greece um and at a drive-in at a drive-in movie oh. theater so what year would that have been? Mm. I want to say it came out in mid eighties, seventy eight. Um, oh, but um, like if it was at a cinema a drive-in, probably it was, it was a little later. A couple years later, yeah, because yeah. we were living in Bethel Park at the time. Because it was, you paid some places you pay per car load, just one fee, and some places you pay per person. And I remember there was a age cutoff, and they asked if I was. If it was 12 or 13 or whatever it was. And you I said yes. I, I, well, I was with my parents. Um, <laughs> had my friend with me. And I just remember going to see that. I think Saturday Night Fever probably came on after uh-huh. it. But I don't know if we we had a big station wagon. And so we would bring yeah. pillows and, you know, turn the car around backwards and sit. Yeah. In fact, when we went with our friends, I don't know what kind of car they had, but they had a car where you could flip the back seat so they would face out. I remember Uh them doing that with their car. So looking at fun things that you can do in the area, if you go to charlotteonthecheap.com, summer fun activities, one of the listings is cool off and waterfalls. And Jody has a whole list of North Carolina waterfalls with brief distri- descriptions. And most you have to descript too. <laughs> most of the pictures there are provided by our son Harrison, his wonderful photography from visiting many of the North Carolina waterfalls. But also check out um, other locations that have a on the cheap site to find out low cost and free things that you can do. These websites will give you. Um, activities throughout the year. You can subscribe to get more information. And as I was digging through these activities, one thing I came across was Top Golf. If you've never gone to Top Golf, never heard of it, it's in a number of different cities. And it's this interesting experience. Um, I looked at their website. What is Top Golf? In short, we're a sports entertainment complex that features an inclusive high tech golf game that everyone can enjoy. Paired with outstanding food and beverage menu, climate-controlled hitting bays and music, even every Top Golf has an energetic hum that you can feel right when you walk through the door. Um, They're not a paid sponsor. No, really. um, We went with our family over, I believe it was a Christmas holiday, possibly. I can't remember. Um, I can't remember now. But you, you sit in these seats and... It's basically like a driving range sort of up high, but there's targets and things that you're aiming for. There's like a couple different games that well, you, you don't play. sit in the seat to play no. the golf. Though. There's, there's like seats. <laughs> it's kind of like a bowling alley, but, but up air and covered to um, overlooking this huge and field. it's golf. <laughs> and so you're yeah you're it's just, a small ball versus a big ball. That's golf balls are. Mm-hmm. You know you said so a bowling alley. So there's different targets and goals that you've got. We had two teams. We played against each other and it was a lot of fun. I remember like my brother helping my youngest to hit the ball. And this was a great activity. My dad loved golfing and um, enjoyed being able to kind of share this with us. And then we got food that we got to enjoy as we were participating in this activity. So. There can be some interesting things right in your own backyard. You know, we think about taking vacations and going places, but finding things in the area that you could do. And and when you're talking about backyard, the idea of camping out in the backyard. Yes, it's on this other list that that I found. 
So just jumping ahead. Verywellfamily.com. I found a hundred. Very well, family. A hundred summer fun ideas for kids and parents. This is by Lauren Mills Brunel, and it was recently updated in November of 2022. And she's got them categorized in different activities. So I've just kind of highlighted a few that we could talk about. One of them is making a bird feeder. Well, we did that. And and it's not, and we'll talk about recyclable stuff too, you know, because what we used was uh, I, my my daughter and I made well, she had the, the base idea. of it. She had the, yeah, she, she, it was her she idea. She saw it somewhere about having a, a, like a ladle coming out of a plastic, like, bottle like a soda bottle and so the the food well, would slide down it was great really that was great in theory but that you started with that idea and the two of you worked together yeah. to create this and then wound up building a whole yeah it's like a little house, house <laughs> the plastic bottle there is lid a, i mean a, a roof and, and, and i think it's like a seltzer bottle so like it's like a one liter bottle Turned upside down. down. You cut the top off, and so it funnels down and slowly releases onto the platform where the squirrel loves to eat. Um, and we <laughs> and used uh, like elastic um, clip straps. I, I don't know what uh, what like you, bungee strap, bungee strap yeah, sure. to hold them up there. And uh, so it's easy, pretty easy to fill. And and like I said, it's been it's been great. It it almost makes for its own entertainment in a way because. You know, we we talk a, a lot around here about bird watching. That we we yeah. have a lot of the Stems kids. And... My dad's love of birding. My brother became this avid birder. Um, he's got his <laughs> Instagram. He's got bird. Help! I can't stop birding. And but for his fiftieth birthday, he found like his four hundredth bird or some really high number like that, and has inspired this love of birding in the whole family. And I now can identify the birds that land on our feeder. I've learned from my daughter who's got bird books. And so we sit, it's right outside our kitchen window. We You, you created a, a hook stand for it that you put into the ground. In fact, I asked you to raise it up some so that we wouldn't have to stand yeah, up. Yeah, I, I still got to do a little more if I can. But it's see been... as we're sitting there. And then we've had the entertainment of the squirrel who's jumped from <laughs> the house onto the feeder and how to chase the squirrel away squirts and uh pokes and uh well you got this idea to put take um clear plastic and make, flexible plastic make too. a dome around the top of it to keep the squirrel from getting in yeah but the flapping it, because it was so flexible the flapping i kept the birds away yeah, basically them scared them right, it's so like having a scarecrow out there and they, yeah birds. so you wound up taking it, it off and they came they came yeah, back then the squirrel but now we've They've been visiting. Yeah. You know when the food quickly disappears that the squirrel is. Well, then they've learned to reach up into the top of it because you've got the top of it cut off. And the squirrel stands on his hind legs and he dips his paws in, and, and eats out of the right out of the top of them, the upside down bottle. And we've also small birds have flown into the top and gone down to get the food and then come maybe, out. Maybe I'll put a picture up. Yeah, that would be great. I, it's, I remind myself to put a picture of that bird feeder. So it's created a, a fun activity for us, all from my daughter's idea to have this feeder and the fact that you allowed her to experiment with her idea. And then from that, you and her finished this finished product. And we have some other feeders we talk about hanging up in other areas of the house. So there's some fun. Well, and, and thinking about that, you might want to check, you know, I'm I'm not sure if Home Depot still does it. But they used to on Saturday mornings they would do once a month. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to. So it build might be something activity, build an activity together. So yeah. it was a kit. It was a kit because I think our our son actually went with his godmother, a friend of ours, and she took him. And it was I don't know the first Saturday of the month, and they'd have a kit and thing that they would build together. And it was different, uh, usually a wood product. And I think you know we've had. Uh, tool little tiny toolboxes kind of thing they put the and i remember one was a, a bird feeder that we put together a little, a, kind of a memory box with things to store yeah. things in so and that was all it was free activities so something there. to something to think about is to check with your with a home depot or lowe's or a local, uh, a local store. hardware store and see and if they're not doing it recommend it <laughs> so there can be lots of fun and inexpensive things to do and Here's a list of rainy day activities 
building a fort. I have so many memories of building forts with the kids in the living room, taking the couch pillows and leaning them up on the sides, putting blankets over the top. This is a fun story. So our daughter became online friends with a girl I had met their mother about a year prior to that. And they were both looking for other kids to play Minecraft with. And they were about eight or nine at the time. And they became fast friends online. Because she lived in, in Ohio. Yeah, she yeah. lives at a distance from us. And then she had another friend in the area. And the three of them went online together a lot. But they did this thing where they created a fort in their room. And they had to stay in the fort like all night. Like it was a challenge to not leave the fort unless she had to go to the bathroom. I think that was the only reason to leave the fort. And, and they each did this in their own homes. Right, yeah. right. But they were online with each other and discussing it. But we, over the years, we've had so much fun. I always joined in, you know, either we're sitting and watching a, a movie or just creating a fort and playing inside of it when they were real little. But even not too long ago, I don't, our daughter put like some pillows over one of the cats and I would, or we kind of commented how it looked like a fort. And so then she went around and made a fort for the other cat too. And one well, thought, you know, and, and this is not about rainy day, but when I was a kid, we made forts and we did it pretty simply. We took, we would take a, a an old sheet and we'd tie it to the top of each end to the top of a fence. You did it outside. Yeah. Like I say, it wasn't about rainy day on that, but, and then we would peg it down and we'd make like a lean to against the fence. And that was a, and then we, we'd go out and do, do treasure hunt on trash day to find stuff to put in the fort. Oh, I've heard those stories of your trash treasure hunting days. I didn't realize you. it was for that. Cause we like one, one year we got one year. I remember we got um, these like blinds, but they were this, they weren't the flip type. They were this, the solid that you, it would roll up like a bamboo almost kind of thing. And we got those, so we were able to put those on either end of our fort. So we'd have, it was like com almost completely enclosed with our. Now Dan Don is dancing with his hands, if you're only <laughs> listening to us and not on the YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. So other fun rainy day activities, find an or origami book. If you've ever done origami folding paper, that can be a lot of fun and a new skill that you can learn along with your kids. Camping in the house setting up we had a kid's little tent that we also set up one time creating a time capsule making paper airplanes it's kind oh. of a lost art and something that's fun to do and if you have a stairwell you know flying the airplanes down the stairwell can i tell the story again sure <laughs> well when i was i don't know how i was probably about 11 or 12 my friend don rains down the street from me we we uh, somebody showed us how to make these special kind of airplane. It took a little bit. Of, it wasn't just a normal, what most people simple think of a paper. simple one. This was a little more. And we, he brought out like a stack of of scrap paper, and we made paper airplanes and flew them out. We we didn't leave the porch. We sat there and made them, and we would just throw them out, see how they would fly, and they land. And so his whole yard was covered almost like snow with white paper airplanes all over the yard because we we did we went through that whole stack and just wow. would just throw them out and leave them out there it was it was fun i got a fun little story sure. i went to the beach with my daughter not too long ago and we were up on like the 17th floor and we flew an airplane off the balcony <laughs> <laughs> Did it go up or did it go down? I'm kind of curious that being up that high, whether the wind took it up first or no, it went remember? out. Oh, it did? Okay. Um, because I was trying to hit the, the roof of the building next to us was lower and I was trying to land it on uh -huh. the roof of the building, but it went in the bushes, I think. And uh Steve was like, Mom, you shouldn't do that. I was like, <laughs> oh no. Night and it was kind of fun. Yeah. And um, um... so there's Another activity in here, which would take quite a stepping out of your comfort zone, possibly rearranging the furniture. Talk about messy. No. <laughs> giving kids graph paper and having them draw out a plan of where you can even draw miniature pieces of your furniture. And if you enjoy doing scale drawings and figuring that out, puzzles are another fun rainy day activity. 
And visiting, like we talked about local sites, this one I thought you'd get a kick out of, Don, eating at the counter of a diner. Oh, wow. So finding mm-hmm. <laughs> a small diner, finding a small town near you. Well, do you remember that diner that we had the uh, Wienermobile to, went to? Do you remember we you you were with, I think you, I'm pretty sure you were with me when. So Don used to work for Oscar Meyer. Meyer and we had this, this diner that was up in, um, Oh, going towards Raleigh. Because uh, we went to the town, right? NC State or one of the schools. Yeah. And we followed the Wienermobile. You, you're a salesman. Yeah. And we followed it around to do promotions. It, 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 oh my God. The, now it's not, we, we go by it every time, the anyway, town. So it was but, a small town and there was a And diner. it was it was an old fashioned, all silver diner, like some from the 50s. And we brought the Wienermobile then because they they bought Oscar Mayer hot dogs. They prided themselves in using Oscar Mayer. So, and they were a customer of mine. So I was able to, that's what the Wienermobile, they do with it is they take it around for promotional reasons. So we got a chance to take it there and and they were so excited. People were, it was so fun to watch because I remember, I think it was at ANC State where this happened. A yeah, guy ran up and hugged it, you know. In college, you got the most reactions. Yeah. College kids, the Wienermobile. And you had little Wienermobile whistles and yeah. like, different things you gave away. But um, so finding a diner, maybe you'll see the Wienermobile. Um, we actually saw it. We were going to um, Georgia for a family get together event. Oh, that's right. I remember you, you called me because yeah. we stopped somewhere to get some food and we saw it parked outside of a grocery store, if I'm not mistaken. Well, when I was a kid, we went to whenever, if we went to the big trip downtown, which was tough for us, we had one car. So we had to take the bus. My mom and I would go. And the big treat was we'd go to um, at this back in those days, the, the clothing kind of stores like, uh, well, in St. Louis, it was famous bar. They would have a diner in in the store itself, and you we got to sit at the counter at the diner. And of course, I always had to have my grilled cheese sandwich. It was so, for some reason, you know, <laughs> it was so much better than anything I've ever had before compared to the ones we'd have at home. You know, so. So other things we can do for fun, finding a county fair or carnival that comes through your town or a nearby town. Um, our area has some different festivals that happen, especially in the warm weather. Like the watermelon festival down in Pageland. <laughs> I had dreamed of going to that for years and it, I was actually a little disappointed. Yeah, it wasn't that. Uh, but yeah. it, did have, it had some um, cars, some yeah. antique sports cars display things to look at things made out of watermelon some different things taking a road trip to a nearby city we've kind of touched on this idea finding a, a an interesting place that maybe you hadn't been to before or you've never taken your kids to well like the um covered bridge that was it was fun we had there's two of them in north carolina the the old covered um bridges that aren't really in use anymore, but they still have them open for to look at. It was it was fun. My my son and I went there, and he he flew his drone through it and around it, and all this was you know. Recently, so yeah. Now that he's grown, yeah, the two of them went on a trip together, um, visiting a local farmers market. That can be a fun activity. I used to do that, um, and the the one near us had they'd bring in different vendors they'd have cooking demonstrations they'd have musicians each week it would be different activities going on and being able to buy fresh produce and other sometimes baked good items and other things well i like the idea that it said in their flea market or or even you know what would it's kind of fun is go shopping go into like a goodwill or a restore where you can buy you know your kids could buy stuff inexpensively and have fun finding treasures and stuff like that. Yeah, yard sailing or yeah. they call I saw a garage sale sign recently. I'm like, oh, that's someone who's from the north. When I grew up in Pennsylvania, we called them garage sales and down in the south oh, they called them as yard, yard sales. sales. Yeah, and we don't need a yard. Of course we don't need a well, we could use a garage though. So I remember going when Abby was little. She loved high heeled shoes. She called them clip clop shoes, <laughs> which is really funny because I don't really wear high heels. I have like one or two pairs that were from like weddings. 
And I remember her trying on the different high-heeled shoes and clip-clopping around as I looked at the different items. But yard sailing can be a lot of fun. And flea markets like just take that to a whole nother level. In this article, they talk about activities for exercising the brain and thinking outside the box, um, having a puzzle race or interviewing an older relative. That, yeah, that I, we did that. I remember I talk about Harrison, it yeah, Harrison did that. And thinking about that with like your dad somehow, I don't know if that, but. And then they go through artsy activities. This one I found fun, creating a summer mural. So I've seen this done at churches and schools where you have a big mural up on the wall. Well, imagine creating that just for your family over the summer. And if you have a place in your house in the basement or somewhere, you can put up paper on the wall and slowly over time, it can add to it either with painting or drawing or. What, what about like even doing it on the side of a shed or something? Yeah. Being um, creative with the yeah, you know, or flowers or something. Country and spray painting on the side of something. A barn. <laughs> can be a lot of fun thinking outside the box, making music and making your own music with your own instruments. So I would always let my kids get out pots and pans. I remember we would put in the bottom of the cabinets only things that were safe for them to get to. And I have a picture of the youngest in a pot. <laughs> She's sitting in the pot. She's, a, she's not even one yet. And my other kids, and we would take wooden spoons and we would bang on the pots and pans and make our not own with her in it though <laughs> make our music we banged on her no <laughs> no children were hurt in the process <laughs> and we enjoyed creating our own music and if you ever want to check out a really fun artist billy jonas has some great fun songs for things like that well he used and he uses some homemade a lot of homemade stuff like uh the big water jugs he would use as drums and stuff like that. So there's there's other uh, similar artists I'm sure out there. So some other some summer fun activities that promote exercising: climbing a tree, and why not climb the tree with your child? Mm. Finding a place where you can go to climb trees. Where we live, we used to frequent two different parks: one in the summer and one in the winter with our homeschool group. And one county allows kids to climb the trees and the other county does not which is interesting yeah well maybe someone's got a great tree for climbing in their yard you know climb up in a tree tree fly a kite uh, in this area you'd probably want need to do that in the earlier spring but finding a windy day outside things like hula hoop um badminton that is a memory i have from childhood in Ohio, we had a badminton net we'd set up, I believe, in the front yard. And I we have a picture with a bunch of the neighborhood kids. Mm -hmm. We'd be out there playing badminton. So it takes a whole lot of people to try to get that little birdie over the net. It's a very fun activity. I remember we got a badminton net some years ago mm -hmm. because of those fun I memories. Had that out in a while, but that I have croquet, lawn croquet is a really fun game. Well, you know, um, we got that game from your mom with the frisbees and knocking the bottle off. Oh, yeah, and I th I was thinking about that. You know, it was a it was a set up game where it had all the stuff, the poles. You you would put a pole at opposite ends of the, of the yard, and at the same kind of position or whatever. And there's like a plastic bottle that. And they would sit on top, and then you had a frisbees, and you would try to fly them across. And depending on what ha how you did it or. You know, you would get different points for knocking that bottle off, but you don't necessarily not think about it, have to have a game set to do that. You could set it up on a fence or, you know, and just have a game of trying to knock it off a fence or anything for that matter. Creating your own um, lawn game. Take yeah. some different balls and different activity equipment you might have and let's create our own yard game. We used to have our youngest was really into like soccer and things. And my brother got a big net for the, the yard and, you know, taking a collection of those things and with kids, no matter, no matter their age, even older kids, let's create a family, a game that we can play. Well, we had jarts back then, but I think they may have outlawed them because they were, they were pointed. You'd have to, you'd throw them and, and try to stick them into the ground, oh. have a circle, you know, yeah. lawn dart. Yeah. I think they were called jarts where it went when I was a kid, but the, I don't think they do them anymore because they <laughs> probably killed somebody or something with them. I don't know. Got yes. 
So finding outdoor things, you know, creating ideas, creating your own ideas, and and giving that time to be creative. We talk about having free time, having downtime, not being overscheduled. You know, if you're a working parent, maybe your kids are going to summer camp or they're participating in activity because you need someone to watch them if they're not old enough to be by themselves or you want them engaged in activity, but making sure there is some periods of time where they can be bored because boredom generates creativity. Creativity. So before we started this podcast, our 14 year old <laughs> came back from her walk. She takes a little walk around the block most days. And she came back to, there was this kid riding his motorized scooter. He was about seven. And I tried to get her to tell the story because she does it so much better than I can. And she said, he was circling around and around me. She said, so each time he came around, I'd walk backwards. So I would be at the same place I was at the last time. She was trying to convince this kid that he was in a time loop. <laughs> Most likely the kid didn't even notice. Or pay yeah, attention. but still it was funny. To, the, was, thought, the, the thought process that went into that. Thinking, and... gosh, like if I could have gotten the other people that were walking to do the same thing. And she just, her mind was just <laughs> reveling with this creativity and, uh, Oh, it just made me smile. You know, before I dug into these articles for these ideas, I uh, we went um, to Myrtle Beach, as we've done many years. This was like, we usually go in the fall. And we're outside in the pool, and there's a lazy river, and there's the tubes that you can float around in. And because we'd often go in September and October, there wouldn't be other people around. And I looked, my kids were bored, and I said, you know, if you were if we were oh, home, we would be going to team challenge at this time of day. And we'd be you know, doing a team challenge activity. And so I think it was Harrison who said, well, I'm going to find a way to get across the lazy river, you know, without getting wet. And of course, Abby jumps in the water and she goes, she's like, I got across. He's like, yeah, but you got wet. So then they started using the tubes to, to build a, a way to get to go across without getting wet. So it became this fun little project that they created and it was you know I just brought up that if we were home we would be doing this I didn't suggest that they (laughs) do this project right and so giving them that freedom that time and checking out things in your area and we'd love to hear your stories of fun out of the box ideas and things that you can do in an hour you know not even if you have a whole day but little little tidbits of time that you can spend and engage with your children and you know, if you can think of somebody, a parent, or or the sandwich generation parent that we talk about a lot, that this information that we we in our podcast we talk about a lot of different topics, and they're all helpful to parents in helping them get through life and and get through parenting. So if if you think of somebody that that really could use some good help, some good uh, information and ideas, please. Send them a link to the, our podcast. It's focusedhealthyfamilypodcast.com. And share this link. Share it with a caregiver. Maybe your kids are young and you've got a babysitter coming. You know, maybe it's a teen and to give her ideas of things that she can do with the kids. Yeah. So that's our podcast for today. We hope you've enjoyed it. We would love to hear from you. We would love some comments. Let us know what you think about this. So uh, and what you would you like to see, what information, what kind of uh, parent information tips you would might like to see uh, us put up there? Because we we would love to be able to set up podcasts for that. And if you like what you've heard today, you can learn more about our parent uh, coaching program or about our next workshop. You can also find our blogs up there. Uh, and of course, the podcast is on our website. We also have Tuesday Tips for Parents, which come out every week on Tuesday. That gives a real effective uh, tip for parents to help them in their daily life. It's it's a short podcast that we do that runs 15 minutes or less in length. And we focus on a particular topic of ideas of what you can do. And you can find all of this by going to our website, FocusedHealthyFamily.com. You can follow us on Facebook at focused healthy family you can follow us on instagram at gina.focusedhealthyfamily and remember how you speak to your children today shapes their future and yours